All right, so today I'm here with Chris Bumstead, the most recent Mr. Olympia in the Classic Division and honestly probably like the most popular bodybuilder in the world at this point. Uh, Chris is an awesome guy, obviously he's at the top of the world, and so today we're going to get a little bit of insights about what he does day to day, week to week in terms of trying to keep himself in peak shape and peak performance, especially through uh, a lot of trials and tribulations every year. A lot, yeah. What's, what's going on, guys? Happy to be here on the show with Dr. Pank. Still feels weird as hell being introduced as Mr. Olympia. <laughs> Every time I'm like, wait, that's not me. Not even on the same level, but like the first, honestly, year, I think, of being Dr. Pank was really weird for me, too. That's cool, though. It was. I won't lie. It was super cool, but it was like, who are you talking to? Yeah, yeah. That's when I would like use that over my friends. Like, call me doctor. <laughs> Just be a little shit. Fair. I've got a physio friend I really should do that to more often, because... They you got to rub it in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Jeff. Um, so, Chris, with you, I, there's so much to talk about in terms of like what your day to day looks like, how you've overcome everything that you've had to overcome to get to this point, and I think honestly, uh, probably the day to day stuff of how you keep yourself going, especially through the more challenging parts of prep and everything like that, would be. A good like, starting point. You want to talk about mentally or physically? Uh, Keep the body alive or the, <laughs> the mind going? Let's start with the mind and then go to the body. Yeah, sure. So, like, very generically, like, what keeps me motivated, kind of? Yeah. Yeah, how <sighs> the, do you do that? The very difficult question. Obviously, like, I think my base point, people ask me when I say this, is that, like, the difference between very successful people and non-successful people are the ones who are willing to work when they're not motivated. So on days where I feel like shit, I'm like, I'm not just have some secret to be motivated all the time. There's a lot of times where I don't feel motivated, but I just like, it's kind of more of a mindset, like just a mental capacity you have to feel that kind of lack of motivation and yet still go for me into the gym and give my full effort, kind of crush a workout. And it's honestly, it's hard to even know where that comes from. It's kind of just like a deep down thing, I guess. It's a combo of like, I think back to remembering why I started this, like remembering how much you just fell in love with the gym and like that pure love and passion for it and what like made me begin for it. And also think of what my end goal is. How bad do I really want to be successful? Let's say I'm like tired one morning, don't want to do cardio, I want to cheat on a meal. And I think am I, if I step on stage and don't look my best, like, am I going to look back and then is this going to be worth it? Or am I going to be like, I should have just sucked it up and done an extra hour of cardio and I had the result, had no stones unturned. That way, if I do lose the Olympia or whatever, I know I put in all the work and I have no regrets in the end. So I mean, that's kind of scattered, but. No, I think it's a good kind of set of thoughts, though, mm -hmm. too. And uh, there have been obviously some times in your preps where you've hit some pretty major setbacks. Actually, I can't remember an Olympia prep where there hasn't been a, yeah. <laughs> a semi major setback. When you experience something like that, is it kind of the same thing or is there, do you have to dig a little deeper to keep going when, you know, like last year when you'd kind of ballooned up the week before and how do you get through that? It's really, it's so hard to explain. It's something my mind, like I, I questioned it and I had doubts in moments, but I never had full days where I like told myself I should give up and then I was just done. It was always just like, get through the day, get through the day, get through this workout, get through this set. I guess you could say like those mini goals that I would set on those days where I really felt like shit, it would literally just be like fall into routine, just get one thing done at a time and like keep doing one more thing at a time. I literally, at this prep even, I remember when I was so dead at the end, I would literally count my sets out and be like, okay, one more. I got, that means I have 12 left and then I do one more. Okay, I got 11 left and just like kind of counting them down like that, which isn't a great way to go about it, but I mean, having those like tiny little goals like that help me kind of push through. I like that and kind of like breaking it down into something manageable though too, I think is something a lot of people can learn from is taking that step back, looking at it less that, you know, like I have a million things to do mm -hmm. and I've already, I've got like 12 reps left in this set and then three more sets after that. And, exactly. Yeah. And just break it down rep by rep and how can you get through that rep at a time and, mm -hmm. and go from there. So I like that. So that's kind of the mental piece of how you've gotten through it. Um, the physical piece too, though, is hugely important for you. How do you keep yourself physically going at that point? 
<laughs> a lot of factors obviously go into that. <laughs> and honestly, it's it, it sucks that I have such a trouble at kind of explaining the mental part because I really do believe that is the most important part and what separates people and like the people who kind of worry about the nitty gritty like scientific details and stuff and that, but they just don't have the mental tenacity to like push themselves further and more and more. And that's just I think that's something that comes from within. But obviously, the stuff that is in your control, I think, comes a lot in just like being being a successful bodybuilder means everything is consistent in your life and the more things you can be consistent with is the better you are literally from the point like you talk about like rest and recovery and the importance of that is literally like go to the bed at the same time getting the same amount of sleep getting up at the exact same time going to do cardio at the same gym on the same treadmill just like those weird consistent things that just fall into such a habit like i know i in my prep i had a apartment gym nobody was ever in but if i showed up for cardio and there's somebody on there's two treadmills only if somebody was on the treadmill on the left i'd be pissed you know that was kind of yeah. throwing my morning off i'm like that's my treadmill <laughs> i gotta be on that one and i would almost like wait a little bit hope they'd be done and get on it but usually just get on the other one and but like those exact things of just being so consistent help my body kind of fall into a routine where you just do it and then when you get more tired and you cut things out like food and stuff even though you're tired and you don't want to do things, you're almost like falling into just this routine of habit. And that just, that's helped me a lot for sure. Like I said, timing of sleep and everything, same with eating the same time every day, all that stuff to keep my energy level throughout the same. So I have consistent, good workouts, all that kind of stuff. That's really important for me. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because you kind of bring the mental aspect of how you're keeping yourself together, even to how you're keeping yourself together at that point physically. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, uh, you know, there's some research that I, I think came out years ago, but came out more recently again, that like willpower itself is a pretty finite resource mm -hmm. and you've only got so many essentially like difficult choices you can make in a day. So to kind of create that routine and more or less remove the choice and just make it something that's happening, I think is a really clever way of getting around the it, fact that you're not necessarily having to use that little bit of willpower you've got to not eat the Suzy Q donuts mm -hmm. that show up everywhere around Ottawa that's, and, that's uh, yeah. and just make it a non-choice and then that willpower is kind of freed up somewhere else. Sure, you don't have to think about doing it because you just do it all the time. So when you, the stuff you do have to think about is more energy invested into pushing harder and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. So with all that said, are there any like singular habits you've picked out in your life that have made a big difference compared to before you'd picked them up? Like is a single supplement to stack you working with a coach versus not, I don't know. Did you ever not train under Ian? I've always had Ian helping me out now. So I can't attest to the change in that, but I do know even being at a top level, I think having a coach helps. Everybody's coach had their own coach. Ian had the coach. It just makes it yeah, easier it's to just coaches all the way. You up. just listen to just have someone to listen to rather than your own head. Makes that a lot better. But in like actual things, you think I've changed over the years that have made me better. I I've, I've talked to Courtney about this recently too about of like meditation and stuff, and I never really thought of it as meditation or told myself I was meditating. But I have times throughout the day where I just like. If I'm waiting for something, if I'm waiting for like, you know, in a lobby, waiting for an elevator even, or in the in, in a car and stuff, I just kind of like turn everything off, put my phone down, and shut down like everything around me. So if I'm in a plane or something, I'll take my headphones out, and not listen to anything, and just close my eyes, and I just like think about a lot of things and just like run everything through my mind, and then I do that for a little bit, and everything kind of eventually goes blank in my head. And I'm not doing it on purpose or anything, but I, I guess it's like a form of meditation in a way. And I can bring myself into this like calm state where I just hear nothing, notice nothing around me, and I'll forget where I am. And when I kind of come out of that, and if I'm like at a doctor appointment waiting to go in, and I've just done that for 10 minutes, I feel like a sense of like calm and just like a little bit more energy throughout the day and just makes me feel like I have peace. And the, obviously the more calm and at peace you feel, the less stress you have, you just feel more motivated to get a lot done. And that's... Not something I so much chose to do, but I just kind of fell into. And it's definitely something I noticed helped me a lot. That's really interesting because that's actually something I didn't know at all that you did. <laughs> um, but to that point, I think it can be hugely impactful, especially when you're in a, a point like you were in prep where 
just like everything is shot and there's not a lot of motivation there's mm-hmm. not a lot of energy and even working with some amateur bodybuilders at this point on just some mindset practices with shows coming up in a couple of weeks they see pretty huge changes and just like their ability not even to stay consistent with diet or the exercise plan but even just to get through that like they're still working and like they have lives outside yeah. of that so to get through their life in that point something like meditation for them can make mm-hmm. a huge difference and so really interesting that you've kind of found that on your own too and even if you weren't calling it meditation <laughs> same there's with a bit of like a, a, a pseudo meditation practice yeah. there which is really cool yeah no i i feel like there's that like whole power of your mind is like very important and my ability to push things out helps a lot in prep like I can like repress a lot and shut things out a lot, but that doesn't help with relationships. Like I know I was very distant from my girlfriend. I kind of didn't see a lot of my friends and talk to my family, didn't reply to texts or anything with people. And I just had to like shut a lot out of my brain. And in doing so, like shutting the stress of, like you said, my health issues I've had or my injuries, like a hamstring tear, just like forgetting about those, not stressing about it, raising really, your cortisol levels and like letting that demotivate me. I've shutting that out has also caused me to shut a lot out of the mother a lot of other stuff out of my life like being more close with my girlfriend or family and whatnot and it's kind of i find a kind of a yin and yang thing you shut out something you can't just choose what to shut it you're kind of shutting your brain off completely and it has negative effects but in a short-term prep obviously you cannot be beneficial well and i think people understand kind of what you're going through yeah, and how important exactly. it is for you to go through so mm-hmm awesome that you've got that support and having touched on kind of your family and Courtney and Ian and Melissa I know you have a lot of really close family and friends who are very very supportive how important do you find that small community is for you when you're going through things I think definitely incredibly important and something that I know a lot of people don't have and something I'm very grateful for so it's like that niche that we just kind of listed, like my coach, Ian, Melissa, my sister, and my girlfriend, Courtney, were all kind of had like their own perfect role they would play. Ian was like the stern, just like hardcore, like didn't give me too much gratification. Was always like, I was like, yeah, I lost like five pounds. And he'd be like, okay, cool. Well, then we'll up your cardio, work harder. You know, it was never like, good yeah. job. You look great. It was always just like that, you know? Whereas like my sister, if I didn't see her for a while, she'd sometimes be like, yeah, you look good. Or sometimes she would be like really excited for me and that would help. And she understands me very like well emotionally and can kind of like uplift me like that. And Courtney's kind of a bit of both. She's always there. She sees me at down times, at high times, and she's always just kind of positive and supportive in my sense. So having those people around in that like array of different personalities in my life definitely helped a lot. And it's literally been an endless support. I know Ian was so huge in my few years of like when I was really sick last year going to prep every single morning he would text me and like you weigh yourself and it's not a way and you want you don't want to share it. So he would text me back what's your weight? What is it? Okay, we're going to do this today. Change this. And I think a lot of stuff he changed. You change something every single day. And I think he didn't think it would necessarily help me physically, but mentally make me think I'm doing something different. Yep. So like, oh wait, your weight's off? Alright, we're going to up your fats, lower your carbs, same calorie, but it's going to help you. And then maybe it's not at all, and he knows it's not, but in my head I'm like, okay, I'm doing something different, let's see this. The next day I do something different, like, let's see this result. So that kind of, him playing a mental game with me almost, <laughs> to, just to keep me pushing on a day-to-day basis, definitely helped a lot. Huh. That's so again, like something I'm learning here. That's really <laughs> cool because, uh, like, obviously you came back from having ballooned up within a couple, what, well, couple days of uh, yeah, really was I think the Olympia. And, that was 2018. Yeah, I think yeah. I put on 15 pounds over two days or something, eating nothing, and then managed to come back and take second, and everything was good. Um, one other one, actually, I did want to ask is. Uh, like obviously for a lot of people performance in their lives ends up revolving around some sort of both career which we've talked a lot about but also relationships Mm -hmm. and we've touched on the relationships but um kind of a specific question to your relationship courtney having been miss olympia before uh did she bring any interesting perspectives that you hadn't had to this prep the even more specifically than her just being Miss Olympia, me trying to become Mr. Olympia in my class was like this 
fear that I've had of like my illness that I had last year, which almost took me out of competing, and that I had this year, and her herself kind of being pushed unwillingly out of competing through a illness and like health issues and stuff, it literally is like a very like how many people in the world won the Olympia title and then got and pushed then, out of it not by yeah. their like reason of, for health issues. So for her to have gone through that herself and everything definitely was something that helped a lot to have someone so close to me who could connect with all my fears, everything that kind of a lot of stuff that was leading to stress and fear to have someone who's literally been through it and is there for me. It's, it definitely would help a lot to have another perspective who understood what you're going through. Yeah, I can uh, can only imagine, yeah. and that's uh, got to be one of the most niche connections in the world Literally, right there, because yeah. I <laughs> don't know if I could think of any other couple that has both been through that one. No. Now, uh, with all that, one of the other big parts of performance that I tend to talk about is purpose. Mm -hmm. And purpose often comes in different ways, and obviously right now bodybuilding is hugely part of your purpose. Um, are there, like, is there any other purpose that you really connect to? Are you solely bodybuilding or is there like kind of a different area where you really find a connection to? I'm putting you really on the spot that's here. That's, a, getting that's deep. a really interesting question. Yeah. I mean, through bodybuilding, I mean, I've talked, people ask me, I, I might, this might be a bit of a tangent, but people ask me what I would do if I didn't want to bodybuild. And a thought I've always had was being a teacher and specifically kind of grade 11 to 12 in high school. And it was never to teach because I wanted to be a gym teacher or like, and it seemed easy or I guess summers off, you know, it was because I had a few teachers in my life that were very impactful in those years where I was never a bad kid, but I was like a bit of a shit in school trying to be the <laughs> cool kid, you know, and whatever. And I had a few teachers who were like, connected with me and kind of trying to put me on the right path and like I think helped me a lot to kind of getting my shit together and as I'm getting ready for the real world and it's a time where you're literally going from living in your parents house going to high school like full time and then all of a sudden you're off into the free world and that like impact that a teacher can have on just getting you ready for real life kind of helped me a lot and through bodybuilding and through my social media and the kind of reach that I've and the the amount of people who kind of listen to stuff I say, I, I notice now, not even on purpose. I'm not someone who picks up my camera and gives a motivational speech, but through people seeing what I've been through and how I've carried myself, how I've acted, the amount of people who now have kind of come up to me and like let me know like the impact I've had on their life, inspired them to do something, put them back on track, got them to start something new or whatever, or just any kind of inspiration I've led to. A lot of people, I've had people almost like come up to me in tears before telling me that they like I don't understand how much I've changed your life and it's definitely like one of the most rewarding feelings you can ever have to like for me I just think I'm living my life like that but like to see me kind of helping people like that is I, it makes me feel super like fulfilled and very like grateful for even more for the position that I'm in so that kind of I don't know how that leads into a purpose or not, but that if ever I am pulled out of bodybuilding and whatnot, I would like to still somehow find a way to like impact people's lives in that sense because it makes me feel very like fulfilled and that I've gotten somewhere that I'm very proud of and that makes me very happy. And in sharing my story and my trials and stuff I've been to, I can help other people also kind of chase their dreams and try and achieve them. Well, I think that sounds pretty much like a purpose as far as I would <laughs> consider it. So there we go. That's... Uh... A really cool way to tie back giving it or tie in giving back as well. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I haven't had my coffee today. Um, where you're able to kind of use the platform you've built for yourself in bodybuilding to then turn around and kind of give that sort of like teaching, uh, teaching or mentoring role, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of have that impact as well. Because as as much as it's fulfilling to you know finally have that Mr. Olympia title and and have the bodybuilding world behind you I feel like there's almost well like you said a lot more fulfillment in certain ways For in sure, terms yeah. of like seeing that impact mm -hmm. of helping other people chase their dreams and kind of giving back that way absolutely yeah so I think uh, oh god this is gonna be the worst yeah, outro ever um, <laughs> I'm losing my words here but that's pretty much what I had for you today so here's the awkward finish. All the questions. My first uh, first real interview. The first real one. Sorry. Yeah. I'm honored then. Yeah. So 
Apologies for it not being amazing. Hey, but. Trust me when I say it gets easier and easier. Well, there we you, go. you can look at back at some of my old videos on YouTube and it's just awkward as hell. And there are a few takes. You get one take on this, no tries. So. Fair. Okay, so not this. not as bad as it could be in that case. Definitely not. No. I, uh, I feel like there was something about kind of doing my first one with you too that made it a little bit worse. There's a little more pressure. <laughs> Fair enough. Those rapid fans. Yeah. I mean, the good thing about these, do you get comments on these? Uh, probably. Probably, yeah. have to well, comment some. We live in Ottawa. We're close together. So if anybody feels like anything was missed or they want to hear more, they can comment the questions and we'll do Yeah, we'll do episode two at two. some point. Yeah. Perfect. Well, there we go. All right, Chris. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>